you know, Disney has been uh, a frequent uh, guest of many a courtroom in the past 24 months. And uh, sometimes they're in the plaintiff's chair, sometimes in the defendant's chair. But, of course, with the Florida issue, um, they went after Florida because Florida said, mm, you're not going to get your special government anymore. <laughs> I don't think you have a right to that. Disney sued uh, the state and everybody else sued back. They went to a judge, federal judge in Tallahassee a couple of weeks ago to argue that I look, uh, can you please dismiss this last claim that Disney has with this First Amendment thing? Um, so the judge is deliberating on this. We are supposed to be hearing maybe in the next couple of weeks uh, after the first of the year after tomorrow. If, if a judge is going to decide to let this proceed into a trial or if he's just going to dismiss this First Amendment claim and and Ron, I kind of want to give you the floor here. See what uh, your your thoughts on on where we're at and in general on this case, this First Amendment issue with Disney. There's no First Amendment issue here. Mm -hmm. There's the, the simply, you know, as a, you know, there's no First Amendment issue here. The, the state, it's actually kind of a funny place. The, the, there has been a an increasing um, trend in the judiciary to pay actually to, in in my view and the view of many other people who practice in this area an excessive amount of deference or to, to give too much credence to the concept of government speech being entitled to some sort of protection it's it's not it's a preposterous idea but in this case that might actually work out poorly for disney it, it might actually be to disney's advantage I mean, disadvantage that this rather dumb uh, doctrine is so prop is so popular. I mean, looking at, at Judge Windsor, who is deciding this motion, he does not have the resume that Disney would have wanted to, to choose for this case. No, he was a Trump appointee, which they really don't like. I think, um, not that that should matter, but you know, no, it shouldn't. And uh, there are excellent judges who are. Um, who have been, uh, uh, you know, nominated by by presidents from both parties, but he is a bona fide conservative. He's a Federalist Society member, as I as I am. I'm sure, whenever he refers to himself, he, anything he does, he says just like Ron Coleman. I, you know, so um, he he's he's a genuine conservative, which. You know, if we're if we're going to handicap judges, let, 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 let me make, put this this way. Based on what Andrew has explained to me, lawyer to lawyer and the lawyer to everyone else, I've watched him discuss this many times. I've had him on my show. There's nothing. There's certainly no First Amendment issue, and there's, and there, there it, it is well within the power and well within the appropriate policy making realm. In fact, it's it's a real question whether what existed before the change that took place under DeSantis itself was constitutional and mm -hmm. proper. Uh, so I don't see anything, any, any possible way that this goes the other way. The only way that I would have seen it uh, coming out in favor of Disney would have been if they would have had one of, uh, you know, the sort of uh, East coast, you know, either, a, you know, a Northern district of California or DC, a DC a district of DC or a Southern district of New York judge, uh, that just, you know, puts the finger up to the wind and decides what's, you know, what, what does my party need here? Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't get that kind of judge here. I simply don't see how there's a f First Amendment issue here at all. I mean, if the reason that it's taking as long as it is to decide this motion is inevitably because this judge knows that whatever his decision is, it is going to be appealed to the 11th Circuit. Mm -hmm. The 11th Circuit is a liberal-leaning circuit, but it's not one like the 9th that is entitled to virtually no respect or the or the D.C. Circuit. <laughs> yeah. Um, the U.S. So, 9th Circus, as it's been often referred to. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I, I, don't, I don't see how Disney wins this on First Amendment grounds. Yeah, I can't either. I, I mean, and I'm not a lawyer, but I'm just looking at this as a layman, just from a standpoint of business structure. It's like, mm, okay, you 
don't have a right to your own private government. It was <laughs> created by the state legislature. It's a public taxing body or supposed to be a public taxing body. It's been abused for 55 years. Um, and Disney hasn't had lived up to any of the promises it made when it, you know, wrote, basically wrote the law itself, handed it to the legislature in 1967 and said, here, sign this, which they did stupidly. Um, and then now they're complaining that a, a, a government body that is not Disney, that is not a wholly owned subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, has no ownership whatsoever by the Walt Disney. It's not on Walt Disney's balance sheet. It's not part of Disney's corporate structure. So I just I, I still I cannot make heads or tails, even as a layman of how that they how they can make this silly argument that an action was taken against a taxing body that the legislature has constitutional control over to yeah, their create or destroy it. I can't do it. It's not owned by Disney that Disney is going to say, well, because they did what they had the right to do, we're going to complain that they our First Amendment rights are violated. I just sorry, kids, it doesn't work. <laughs> or, or to put it slightly differently, the fact that Disney as a corporation absolutely had a right to take a political position on the issue of mm -hmm. teaching advanced sex education, and I use this, advanced advisedly, to very, yeah. very young children. First graders. Um, so so <laughs> Disney, Disney, you know, is they can, they can take a position on that, but that doesn't insulate them from the normal operation of business of government of, of uh, or or the florida constitution mm -hmm. yeah and, and you know it's it, it's it's kind of simple you know if 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 the state of florida had after that immediately turned around and said we're just going to arbitrarily revoke all of your business licenses you can't operate your parks starting tomorrow that i could see then maybe that there there would be a claim of of you know retali uh, retaliation against the Disney company itself, that this didn't happen. Or we're you know, going to revoke your uh, reseller permit or your liquor license. Yeah, something along those lines, right? Something along those lines, right? That 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 would be something you could see if there was no other just cause for it, other than to get them back. But that's not the case here, Ron. Yeah, you can you can. What you guys are getting at is what, what you're going to want to look at when you talk about retaliation is, are you treating like conduct in a like manner? Mm -hmm. And the problem for Disney is, so in other words, are other companies that take positions also having their liquor licenses revoked or resell, whatever, you know, name your privilege or license or permit if you want. Disney's problem is there is no there's no such thing as a like actor. There's no one else has ever had in any state, forget Florida, the kind of privatized government that Disney was allowed to have. So for them to prove retaliation, it, besides all the other problems and 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 the and the decided lack of a first, of, I mean, there's a serious standing problem here. And chances are, the, I mean, I haven't read the papers, mm -hmm. but the judge may very well say, I'm not even going to reach the First Amendment issue. Who the hell Who the hell are you to sue? Right. Going back to your point. Well, I right. think that's that's what the state is trying to argue in the dismissal, is my understanding, Ron, is basically it's 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 a lack of standing. Before yeah. you so leave, that, Ron, I know yeah. you got to walk up the door. Let me ask you this one question. As someone who's, uh, by the way, I don't think I've ever told you this. When when Valiant first told me that you were coming on the show, I said, I think, I think, I, I think in the text, I said, "There's no effing way that you got him." Um, but I just wanted to. So I mean, I've been wanting to tell you, ask you this question for a long time. As someone who's been doing what you've been doing for so long, had you been one in the room when Disney's chief counsel went to outside counsel and said, "Hey." We need a solution to strike back against Florida. And had you been in that Zoom call or in that room, what would you have told these high-priced, high-powered LA base and New York law attorneys that signed that that signed that motion? Well, I would have told I they would have told me, as we have, you know, in my firm, we've spoken to some names you must know about lawsuits. 
Uh, but they wanted to file and told them, that's a crazy waste of money. We won't do it. I mean, if you want us to, we can. Here's how you're going to lose. Wow. Here's what it's going to look like. And we, and wow. We out of it. Wow. But there is a time when you do put it to a client. We've filed many suits that we knew were uphill battles. And we say to the GC or whoever is the decision maker, or you understand that this is an uphill battle. And you, ha- you, ca- there are legitimate business reasons to file a lawsuit that is unlikely to prevail. But as long as we, as the lawyers, don't have to violate our ethical duties to not to bring claims that are completely uh, frivolous and frivolous. Now that is a very slippery slope. So if you're Donald Trump, or you're a Donald Trump lawyer. The world of frivolous expands greatly. Okay. Uh, if you're Disney, chances are very low that you're going to get nailed for frivolous because mm-hmm. you're on the right side of things. So then, in a, so then a client might come to a firm like yours and say, Hey, Ron Coleman has told me that we're not going to win, we're not going to prevail, but we want a firm like Ron Coleman or not your firm, but you know, someone like your firm. You want to go ahead and be Disney, that's for sure. Spend 100 to 300, 500 grand in order to just for what PR north of that wow no well so, so so sometimes you have to bring a lawsuit in order to satisfy a constituency mm, a stakeholder so, so, speak. so you're not lo- so you don't look like you're doing nothing so you don't look like you're doing nothing huh. or to That's impose, what been doing for sure <laughs> wow or to impose pain on an adversary uh but here you're not going to do that because there's it's a state so states don't run out of money uh Again, as long as it's not ethical, as long as it's not unethical to file the papers and it's not a frivolous claim, wow. you can make a political decision to give it a shot. But, um, you know, it's it, lots of law firms do it. And sometimes sometimes you call on, you know, a company like Disney will call on a firm that it has a regular relationship with and say, You, we're, you know, you, we, we've paid you millions and millions over the years. <clears throat> we don't, we expect you to step up to the line. And if it, if it means striking out or if it means hitting a long fly, that's what we're asking you to do because we've been loyal clients to you and we intend to remain loyal clients. Like we're not going to, we're not going to hold it against you that this claim isn't going to fly. We get it. It's a problem, but we do expect you to come through for us and to give it your best shot. And we think you guys are the, are the guys to do it. That's a great world to live in. <laughs> huh. Wow. Giving it the old college try. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that you bring up a great point, Ron, and, and this, I had this next just as kind of a, a chaser to the article we had it before. But I mean, of course this was, this was, I think after Bob Iger realized that this idea of filing these lawsuits wasn't working. Because and to this point, I'm going to quiet the noise and, you know, we're going to we're going to we're going to rock back on the stuff going on with the culture war in Florida. Here's here's my thinking. And and remember, this federal lawsuit that Disney had originally had, I think, a half a dozen more counts in there that they were they were they were claiming that the state had uh, had been involved in. They cut all those out and and they just now it's just the first amendment claim but there were six or seven others a few months ago that they dropped i think disney went into this i'm going to get your thoughts on this or do you think that maybe disney went into this like you just said sometimes you got to do something to satiate your constituency right i'm wondering if disney didn't think that well everybody's going to be on their side because they're disney and the you know that the the bubble of Los Angeles in New York represents the rest of America, which of course well, it that's, doesn't. That's, I mean, I, I think the entire theme of, of of tonight's program and most of the programs I've done with you uh, on Sunday evenings, Valiant, is that Disney's management is absolutely out of touch with anything outside that bubble. Yeah, and yeah, they not just that, that, but. Pull a judge like the one they did because they're like again. I've mentioned this a few times. There are some really, really awful judges in the Southern District of New York. Uh, I'm sorry, in the Southern District of Florida. I'm not saying there aren't in the Southern District of New York, but in the Southern District of Florida, there, there are some real hacks. And if they would have pulled one of those hacks, 
then, you know, they, they would have had a real fighting chance, but they did not get the draw that they were looking for. Yeah. And the, the appeals court, you said the 11th, where, where is the 11th? Is that the one that's in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. I didn't know that. That's the, that's the one in Florida's part. We're down here in new Orleans. We got the fifth. We're kind of blessed. Cause that's, that's well, the, 11th used, the 11th used to be part of the fifth. Okay. And then when Florida got much bigger, so that Florida and Atlanta grew back when Congress paid attention to these kinds of things, mm-hmm. they divided the fifth into the fifth and the 11th. Why they haven't done that into the ninth or just, just close the whole damn thing down. Nobody knows. I, <laughs> That Happy is the most Year. worthless Thanks for court. Me on great to you guys, as usual. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Ron Coleman, everybody. Make sure you check out Ron Coleman and the Coleman Nation podcast. Catch Ron on Twitter and go catch his channels on YouTube as well. Yeah, Ron, Happy New Year to you. It's free. Come on. Good night, guys. Exactly. Exactly. Take care, Super Ron. Supercat time. Yes, indeed. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.